So um, one big pain point, I think, with developers debugging layouts has been um, the sort of layout paradigms like Grid and Flexbox. And um, I was really excited to have worked on uh, bringing Grid and Flexbox tooling to DevTools, um, not just in Edge, but actually we collaborated with uh, folks on the Chrome DevTools team, built all of this functionality together. We were like having uh, cross team meetings and, and you know shared docs and things to really make sure um, we were building a really robust solution. And of course, you know it's always better when you we put lots of heads together. And I, I think it's it's really borne out in this feature. Um, so I want to show uh, some of the cool kind of layout debugging functionality we have. So just um, I I happened to I did a little research before this uh, started <laughs> and I found oh. We've got grid and flexbox layouts on the learn page, which is pretty cool. I found this, this sort of grid, this grid of cards. And um, you'll notice here in the elements tool, when I hover over this, I can start to see the little gaps uh, between the grid items. And there's also this sort of grid button here, which I can click. And that turns on the sort of persistent grid overlay, which is really cool. OK, that's cool. Um, there is a layout tab. So um, where you normally have styles, you can go over to layout. And you get a lot of configurability options here for both looking at grid and flexbox. I have extend grid lines turned on because I really like to see, you know, for example, how they might line up with other things on the page. Um, another cool thing you can do is actually turn on the sizes. Um, and so, for example, um, I can see what size uh, different things are being rendered at, like versus they're both their um, authored sizes and their computed sizes which is super helpful um, when you're debugging grid. And here I can go check boxes, turn these grid overlays on and off. I can also change the color if I don't really like that red on the overlay. If I want something a little more subdued, I could make it gray or whatever. Um, and you get all these same cool op options with Flexbox as well. Um, not to mention you can kind of go find those back in elements. Um, so this is super, super helpful. Grid and, and Flexbox have always been like pretty, I think pretty challenging layout paradigms. They do have a lot of like different properties and sort of fiddly parts. Um, but what I think is super cool in terms of learning, not only debugging Grid, but actually learning how Grid works through DevTools. If we go back to the styles pane, um, I, I still have this Grid container selected. And you notice this little, there's a little icon here next to display grid. And when I click this, um, it actually pops over the sort of visual grid editor. And this is such a game changer because all these different properties like align content, align items, like I always get those mixed up. I can actually just go and trial some of these and see like, oh, when I clicked justify items, it actually changed the spacing on that, oh, it moved it, is actually updating in real time um, the layout paradigms. Um, for anyone who's ever tried to debug grid and flexbox layouts, you know how much time you can spend trying to remember all these property names. And you see as I'm clicking these uh, different buttons, it's actually changing, uh, it's showing me the CSS. And so I am not only playing with it, but I'm actually seeing the code that it generates. It's a super, super helpful um, in just sort of getting your head around what all of these properties mean. Um, not to mention that uh, when you mouse over things like grid, uh, grid column gap or row gap, you're seeing those actually highlighted on the page. And so it just starts to make it click in your mind. You're like, oh, that's what a row gap is. It's that space between the track above and the track below um, combined with this visual editor is just super, super handy. Okay, so I, 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 I have to say, I, I'm a Bootstrap fan, don't at me. Um, <laughs> I, the reason that I use Bootstrap is, is because I, 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 trying to lay things out in CSS is a challenge. Like that CSS is awesome mug, like that just, that, that, that speaks to my soul. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that's always the struggle that I wind up running into. Having this, um, and it was somebody else that, uh, or you had said that, 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 that it's a game changer, and um, uh, there was somebody on Twitch 
um, that said, it's like a wizard we get editor for flex. Like that's, 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 that's now it. And so now I can just go in and I can just play around and go, Oh, okay. This is now the CSS that, that I'm going to need to lay things out the way that I want, yeah. copy paste back into my editor and, and away I go. Like yeah. this is, this is so, this is amazing. This is really yeah. cool. Yeah, absolutely. And and yeah, I was showing Grid before. It also works for Flexbox. So if you want to keep using Bootstrap and you want to say like, oh, what's that flex direction thing? What's going to happen? Oh, yeah. You know, sometimes you change a flex direction for mobile layouts. You can see I've, I've been playing with the header here. It's actually changing it, you know, between row and column, um, playing with some of these alignment properties. Oh, look, now it's centered. This is such a huge, huge help. And um, I actually, I heard from someone who um, I met kind of randomly, uh, who is a, a web developer. And she said, oh, you worked on that? That is, we, at my company, we're actually able to remove dependencies on libraries because now our developers can go and debug the real sort of native layout features so much more easily. And I love stories like that where people can cut out Bootstrap, where people can, you know, um, I, I like Bootstrap, nothing against it. But if you have a dependency where it's just like the only reason you have it is because like it just abstracts away things that are kind of complicated. And you have this tool now though that can help you both reason about it and also learn it better. I think that is is just huge. Um, that's That's amazing. Yeah, we've we've actually got a couple of these little visual editors that I think aren't really well known. Um, I'll go back to to this one. Uh, this is my to do app from earlier, just because I think it's a little less cluttered for maybe some of the other things I'll show. Um, we have uh, a couple of visual editors. Um, you know, you'll see these little icons in the Dev Tools, and many of these are clickable. So. You know, for example, um, color swatches are typically clickable. Um, I can go change a color. I can go change the opacity of a color if I want to make it red, but I want to kind of get half tone or whatever. Um, that's something you can you can edit visually as well as like here's one I think is pretty cool. Um, this is box shadow, uh, which has a sort of strange uh, syntax. No. You know, it's like. 11 pixels, 11 pixels, 11 pixels. And you're like, what does that mean? Um, but here you have these sort of visual tools where you can like add blur, or add the spread or change the angle. <laughs> and it's just like, it's cool. And you get to see how the code is changing live. And it really helps cement for you. Like, oh, that's what, that's what these numbers mean. Of course you can go in and I like to use arrow keys to go, you know, max things out or, you know, go up and down. And that's a really helpful tip as well um, for to kind of um, tweak some of these things is, is super helpful. No. <laughs> Here's another cool one. Um, this is an experimental feature, so I'm gonna go flip it on. I, I just open up settings and DevTools through this little gear icon. And there's lots of experimental features the things that are coming. Um, this is a good good place to kind of snoop around. If you wanted to, you know, put um, dev tools in a different language, we have many uh, different language support. We've had this for, I think, since we launched pretty much, uh, which is really cool. Again, those those uh, themes, we've got new theme support um, that's unique to Edge dev tools. So, um, you know, many of the popular VS Code themes uh, like Monokai or, you know, if you want to do Solarize Dark, which is one I, I tend to use quite a bit, um, you can have your dev tools match VS Code, which is pretty cool. But I got distracted here. I want to go back to experiments. And I'm going to turn on, there's so many experiments here. There's, there's, so, there's so much cool stuff. But enable font editor within the styles pane. And um, as you might imagine, this is going to give you that same sort of visual editing um, tooling and elements. But instead of you know these color swatches and things like that, you now have a little clickable menu for playing with your typography, which is really cool. You can go in here and, you know, increase the size. Well, that's too big. <laughs> yeah. You can go play with um, some of the CSS properties, also fallbacks, which is really cool. Um, not just some of the actual font names, but uh, some of the generic families. Um, so, you know, like system UI is one that a lot of people use if they want, you know, their page to kind of match whatever, you know, system the user has. So yeah, just another kind of cool um, 
visual tool and then you get to see, you know, how that impacts your source. So it's great. It really helps solidify that connection between like, what does it look like? What do I want to happen? And what does the code actually look like? It's sort of being able to triangulate those um, is really, really cool.